All right, guys, welcome back to a whiteboard session. I've got a lot going on behind me on the whiteboard, and I felt that it was a good time to start talking about two concepts that I use daily in my clinical and coaching practice. And you know, for coaches this is a, and clinicians, this is an important framework to think about your rehab process for your, for your patients or clients. And for athletes, this is also an important concept to understand as maybe you're dealing with some frustrations as you're trying to get back and progress to the activity that you love and that you want to be able to do. So the first concept that we'll talk about today is this idea of CSD and BSU. And this is an acronym for calming stuff down and building stuff up, right? And often when we experience pain or injury, there is a time where our goal is to calm things back down. Uh, and, and that can be, that can be a tough uh, goal, or that can be a tough process. But there are a few ways that we can start calming things down. And you know, the, the first bullet point here, we have, you know, remove stressors, right? So can we identify things in our life, in our movement, in our activity that are increasing that discomfort, increasing that pain? And can we start to, to uh, navigate or control some of those variables, either removing those variables or reducing the frequency or volume of those variables? Okay. The second thing, believe it or not, manual therapy, right? We know that manual therapy has some effect on our, on our nervous system, our ability to perceive what is happening in our environment uh, from a pain standpoint, right? So again, manual therapy can be effective at controlling or calming things down in these early stages. Are we actually you know, affecting tissues or um, creating permanent change? Probably not but we do are able to create some kind of temporary change in how we're perceiving uh, our situation, which can make us more uh, susceptible to loading and the things that help us get back to where we wanna go, right? The other thing is deload or rest, right? Our body is always in a constant state of healing. It wants to get back to homeostasis, right? When we do experience pain or injury, right? It's important to know that the body never stops healing, right? It always wants to get back to a baseline level. And when we do have that acute uh, injury process, it might be important to actually remove some stress from that area, right? Or deload or rest uh, that area so our body can re regenerate and recover and get back to baseline. Now, those things by, them by themselves are probably not going to get you back to where you want to go. So once we calm stuff down in this early process, we want to start building stuff up, right? And the goal here is we want, we want to improve our ability to handle the specific stressors that we need to be able to handle in our life. Now, how do we do that? Well, once we're able to calm things back down, we can start to gradually or progressively start loading our system. Right, and there's a, a dose response that we're looking for where we apply a deliberate stress to the body, right? And we expect a favorable adaptation to occur. And that favorable adaptation could be strength gains, ability to run further, uh, our ability to lift more weight, our ability to do a movement without pain, right? There is go always gonna be a specific adaptation that we're looking for, and to get that adaptation, we have to make sure we're applying the right amount of stress to get that adaptation. Now, <clears throat> that is where this chart comes in. This chart is the envelope of function, okay, termed by Scott Dye. And what you'll see here on the y-axis, you'll see load, so low to high load. On the x-axis, you'll see frequency, low frequency to high frequency. When we're applying a dose or stress to the body, we have a few zones where that stressor could land within, okay? This first one is maybe a, a lower load, a lower frequency of load, right? So maybe something like, I don't know, a band walk, right? Or a very low level exercise where we're applying a stress to the body, but actually that stress is not enough to create any kind of adaptation. Right? So nothing is actually changing from a tissue tolerance standpoint. No adaptation occurring. Right? We have this homeostasis zone, 
right? And that's, that's where tissues are comfy. That's where they like to live. That's where their baseline is. That's where they want to be. Living and dosing in homeostasis, we can gradually move the needle by hovering right around this line, right? This line is going to be called the envelope of function. When I work under that, I'm not driving more irritation. When I am over it, I'm in the supra physiological overload zone. And in that zone, I'm driving irritation or I'm approaching the threshold of that tissue's capacity, right? And usually when I'm driving stress or dose in that area, that's where I'm driving irritation, right? That's where I'm creating micro trauma to the area. Uh, and, and again, that can impact our body's capacity and create more tissue breakdown or nociception or irritability or sensitivity uh, in that tissue. So when we exceed super physiological overload, that's where we're getting into actual structural fail failure where the tissue is now becoming compromised. It's no longer able to sustain the amount of stress that we're putting on it. So when we talk about progressive overload and dose, really what we're talking about is, hey, how do we increase our tolerance and our capacity? Well, it's going to be by specifically prescribing loads that stay within this homeostasis range that help move the needle or the envelope of function up and to the right. When I'm resting and when I'm deloading and I'm in a lot of pain, this envelope of function moves down to the left, okay? So again, when I try and dose myself, I'm no longer able to withstand the stresses that I'm used to uh, doing. So again, calm shit down, ooh, calm stuff down, build stuff up is a general framework that we can follow, right? To, to navigate our rehab process. The envelope of function gives us insight into why dosing appropriately is how we move the needle in our capacity and maybe why resting and deloading for prolonged periods of time and getting back into our activity might be causing continued symptoms, okay? So again, calm stuff down, build stuff up, envelope of function. Thanks for tuning in today. I'll see you guys next time.